Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Charles Sabanson. and welcome you guys to another episode of the Dreamers Pro Show. We cover everything from sports, hot topics, classic debates, entertainment, and we'll give you guys a fresh perspective on things. And now we see them. Today, we got a very interesting show in store for you guys. Before we get into it, please make sure you like the video and sub to the channel. Also, if you hear some noise in the background, they're doing some construction work outside, so uh, just bear with us there. Anyway, let me get into this uh, topic here. So, <clears throat> you know, the Lakers drafting Bronny James is turning into is turning out to be one of the most contentious things that has happened over the last two weeks and a bunch of people weighing in uh giving their thoughts predominantly though however people on espn are 100 pro the move in fact yesterday we produced a show reacting to some comments that stephen a smith and adrian warjanowski had said uh when the when the news officially dropped and <clears throat> they were basically you know defending it defending nepotism saying that look this is something that always existed in the nba so we don't need to make a big deal out of it uh, etc., etc., uh, and etc. So, what happened this morning? Uh, one of our viewers sent me a clip to my Instagram account. Again, if you're not following me on Instagram, my handle is CTABANZ. And he sent me a clip which featured uh, Chris Mad Dog Russo, Brian Windhorse, Molly Karam, uh, and Stephen A. Smith. And they were basically reacting to the question that the moderator posed, which was, <clears throat> Who's the most interesting player in this current draft? Right. Uh, and then it came time for Stephen A. Smith to give his response. Stephen A. Smith essentially said that, look, the most interesting player in this draft by far in his estimation uh, is Bronny James. But then something interesting happened that the panel, I believe, wasn't ready for. And it created this uncomfortable, awkward moment uh, for these guys when Chris Mad Dog Russo began to speak. And when he began to speak, he essentially started saying that, look, <clears throat> The only reason any of us up here are even discussing Bronny James is because of his father, not because of the merits of his collegiate uh, uh, accomplishments. And Stephen A. Tr Smith tried to spin it and talk about, well, you know, he has some health issues. And he's like, yeah, but that's not the question. The question is, who's the most interesting player? And he's saying that he doesn't warrant being, being viewed as the most interesting player in the draft because he goes... When has when have we ever viewed a 55th pick in the second round as the most interesting player ever? And it really created this awkward exchange for, for you know for, for the entire panel. So what we want to do is we want to play exactly what Chris uh, Chris Russo had to say. We want to play what Stephen A. Smith had to say in his rebuttal to him, and we want to come back and give you guys our thoughts. Take a listen to the exchange here. The operative word here is intrigue. We ain't talking about just basketball. If it was basketball um, in terms of talent, obviously that's not the answer to this question. But when you use the word intrigue and you think about the multitude of storylines that come associated with this person, Bronny James, to me, is the most interesting thing going on. We're all waiting to see what happens with his name. You might be. I am not. He would not even play on UConn last past year. Wow. He would be on the bench with Danny Hurley's kid. He okay. wasn't better than uh, than Newton. He's not better than Spencer, and he's not better than Castle. Nobody said he is. Well, hold on now. But you are talking about him as a draft possibility, and he would be the fourth guard on UConn. Newton's not getting drafted. The point guard who won two championships. This is a guy who, in a horrendous conference on a terrible team, averaged 4.8 points a game on 36% shooting. I mean, this is on USC. He didn't do this at Duke. This is at USC. I mean, if Bronny James' father was a... No, hold on now, Stevie. If LeBron James is not his father, would anybody care about Bronny James? Well, let's be Buddy. honest. Let's call it like we see it. I know that's difficult that's to hear. A, we are doing it. That, that's a very yeah, fair point. Fair he would not be even an issue. Nobody would care. His father is the reason his intrigue. That's the only reason. Come out. But that's what I'm saying. I'm not denying that. I'm not going to disrespect the kid. I'm going to remember that there was a cardiac arrest last summer and that he didn't play until January. I'm going to remember. I mean, you're talking about the dude like he's 100 percent healthy, came into college and did absolutely nothing. No, he almost died. He, he was out for half the season. He comes in in January. I'm not saying that we saw something and, oh, my God, this guy, his credentials on the basketball court is worth it. But in the same breath, you do have to take that into consideration. You also have to take into consideration the fact that LeBron James is his father. 
and LeBron James is still playing, and LeBron James is about to approach free agency, and LeBron James has declared he would love to play with his son, and on top of it all, the Lakers with the 55th pick, you know, who knows what they're going to do just because LeBron James wants them to do it. Who knows what the Boston Celtics are going to do at the 54th pick. Who knows what Dallas is going to do. Who knows what a team with bigs where they the focus on Embiid or Jokic in terms of having a big where your offense goes through that you can afford to take a chance on a young talent that's known for, that, that believes that have some leather athleticism and prioritizes defense and what have you, and they're looking at the upside and to bring them along. I'm saying, yes, he has not proven himself on the basketball court on a collegiate level. And, yes, if he were not LeBron James' son, we would not be talking about this. But the fact that he is, and with LeBron James having said what he has said, that's what makes it interesting. And we can't forget, as much as we want to sit up there and talk about the lack of the credentials, let's at least acknowledge the kid almost died. God, Thank God he's still here. Cardiac arrest, and he's out. And then he comes back in January. We're acting like he's been 100% healthy, no issues, and was just riding the bench like Stephen A. or somebody. No, that is not what happened with Bronny James. Bronny James almost died, and he's and he recovered from that. We got to remember that and put that in its proper perspective. I, I, We've, been thing, I, We've been waiting. We've been waiting. I gotta say one thing. Sure. For uh, listen, we're gonna now throw out LeBron, uh, Bronny's health. Oh, that's what you're going to do? Well, he had a bad year because he had health in the middle of the – that wasn't the question. The question is, based on his high school career and based on what he produced for USC when he had a chance to produce, you tell me why you would draft him anywhere in the first two rounds. Tell me the reason. What evidence do we have – Zero. And I know you want to bring up the health all you want Zero. with the heart, with the heart issues. That's no, the zero, one. doggy. You're that, right. That, that's the you're problem. right, doggy. Zero. But the point is, knowing that we've been talking about him for months. Okay. So you heard what the you know what the panelists had to say. What are my thoughts on this? First of all, I don't believe what Chris Russo said was controversial in any way, shape, or form. I believe he stated the obvious. Now. <clears throat> What I believe is also happening is that some people are trying to make it seem like no, 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 no. There, th th this isn't, this isn't. We're not talking about Bronny based on the based on the fact that he's LeBron's son. We're talking about him because he did some incredible things in college, and that's just not the case. That like that is not the case. I heard someone bring up the 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 point of, well, you know, look at what Doc Rivers did for his son, Austin Rivers. You know, there you had nepotism there, and I'm like, no, you didn't. Why? Because Austin Rivers, if you go back, he was averaging 15.5 points per game at Duke. And he was the 10th overall pick in the draft the year he came into the NBA. Now, later, he got a pretty big contract when he joined the Clippers. And people kind of speculated, did he get this contract because of his father? That's something else. But he didn't get drafted into the NBA by an NBA team, averaging five points a game. And then they said, oh... He got drafted to a team that Doc Rivers was coaching. No, that wasn't the case at all. So it wasn't nepotism whatsoever, whatsoever. Then, some, then one person said, "But why are you trying to? Why, 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 you know, why are you bringing up his his collegiate uh, uh, feats?" The reason you're bringing it up is because we because it would then give us the reason why this particular person is qualified. And in the case of Bronny, most people believe that he's in that position because of his father. Now, whether that's right or that's wrong, that's a different conversation. In the case of what Chris Mad Dog Russo was saying, it's 100% the truth. And it's the reason Stephen A. Smith quickly agreed with him. That is the reason we're discussing him. And I just wish that everyone would, would be honest about it. Would be honest about it. Now, here's something else that I'm noticing. I'm also noticing a, a new behavior uh, from LeBron f uh, fans, which is now they're, de now, now they're beginning to support. Now they're, su now they're defending the son the way they defended. I guess it's like a family deal. It's like a it's like a coverage plan. It covers the entire family. The the honey they poured all over everybody, not just LeBron, but the, the whole family. These these dudes cannot stop. It's funny. One of them sent me a threat uh, the other day on uh, uh, Instagram, talking about you not. <laughs> he said you're not welcome in L.A. and all of this. You're like yeah, you be talking like you gully, like you be like you bout it bout it, like you about that life. And I'm like really, is that, is that what I'm doing? Sounds like I'm sensing a little bit of insecurity in you. I'm just talking normal talk sports here. And you're feeling the type of way. And he told me he going to bloom black me. You're not good in LA. And the funniest thing was some of our viewers who follow our content, uh, they're from LA. 
And they were like, yo, you know how they talking to you, your boss? So you're like, yo, he fronting and another, you good out here. Like, you're like, yo, son, not even. I was like, this is, I'm like, yo, just because we talking sport. These LeBron fans don't play. They do not play about some LeBron James. They do not play when it comes to LeBron. They ready to crash out for him. I'm like, really? Really? Now I'm being banned from LA. Matter of fact, if I went to LA, which I've already been, but if I go again, I feel like we're going to get a lot of love because we, you know, we'd be spreading love. Like, I don't, I don't think it's all of that. I think we may, I might see some Laker fans and like, yo, you a hater, but like jokingly and have fun. He's like, nah, son, don't come to LA. He posting a burn on the bed. I'm like, yo, on the bed. I'm like, yo, all right, whatever. Catch you guys on the next show. Peace.